Hi everyone, Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. I want to do a bit of a breakout session here on the group by function and how you can utilize this in a couple of ways inside of Power BI. Now, historically, I haven't actually used the group by function uh, that often, to be honest, uh, mainly because, and this is, a, this is a perfect example of just Power BI in general, there's actually many ways that you can solve exactly the same thing. And, and I would actually place, um, well, group, group by is certainly part, uh, part of this because you can solve a lot of the things that group by does with uh, other table functions like uh, summarize, which is what, historically what I've used quite a lot. Um, and so, but, but I just want to show you that it can be used here and potentially from a performance perspective, um, you might actually get, if you're, if you're having some terrible performance with, say, some of the other table functions, I would give group by a go because you might find that it, it is refined for performance and it might actually make your um, your formulas a lot quicker. But, you know, we're talking very minor things here, you know, my, minor time differences of, of, of any at all. Um, it just totally depends on your data, to be honest. Um, Personally, you know, I always get away with, I've always historically got away with just using summarize if I wanted to create a virtual table in my calculations or a, or a calculator table um, in my model. Um, but anyway, I think it's good, this is a really good one just to just to understand the, the sort of syntax that you have to write for this particular function because it is it is slightly unique. And so I think that uh, you'll you'll enjoy learning uh, learning how it works. Okay, so let's let's have a look at this first example. So Basically, what are we doing with a group by? Well, we're trying to group by certain um, dimensions in our data, right? So we're potentially trying to group, create, create a, a table, either a physical or a virtual one, based on um, sort of elements in our data model um, that haven't been aggregated before. So we've got a very common model here where I've got sort of sales data, I've got customers, dates, regions, products, etc. But at the moment, I'm only I can only uh, you know I can group um, when I place filters from all of these different tables. But for example, what if I want to uh, work out some unique insights by product by state per product by state? Okay, so we need to f find a way to somehow aggregate up at that level because you're going to see in a second. I want to work out what is the max uh, sale amount per product per state that a customer has. Okay. And that's that's um, you can't really do that unless you do some sort of aggregation in the middle there within within an iterating function, okay? And so um, this is just another way to create that aggregation. We, and we can use group by. You can obviously you can create um, you can create aggregations with summarize uh, and, and 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 some other ones, um, but this is just another one, okay? So the 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 way you got to write the format is you've got to you've got to first of all reference a table. And what I've done here is I've referenced the sales table because then that enables me to reference any other um, dimensions from two different lookup tables. They don't have to be from the same table. And so what I've done is I've gone product name and by state. Okay, so this is going to aggregate up by at a product level and also at a state level. Now, what's interesting here is that you can't actually place a measure inside of here. You have to use a syntax similar to this where you have to use an iterating function and then you want to place in this current group function just like this and then go and run some iterating logic at each different row in the whatever um, whatever table you've set up here and so basically from a I believe from a performance perspective what this does is it only actually iterates over the grouping that you have done versus every single row in the sales table like you would with a general SumX formula. Okay, I think I'm pretty confident that, that, that that's how it works, but um, but um, but yeah, look, I, I could probably do some more further testing myself on it just to make double double sure, but that's that's also what the the text says in the um, in the formula documents um, put out by Microsoft. But it's just show you an interesting an interesting thing here. Check this out, check this out. So if I go and put um, my revenue, I've got a revenue measure, you'll see here that it doesn't actually return a result. It actually errors out. And it's just because you need this very specific um, formula syntax. You have to write it in this very specific way. And then you get a you can get a new table just like this. And you can you can make your table bigger. This is, you're not just restricted to this, you can keep going just like just like you would and say a summarized function. 
So you can create lots of different um, columns, etc. You know, with similar logic. It's very fast. So when you actually run this first time, it's very very fast. Okay, so I want to jump jump back here, I wanna, and I want to show you this. Okay, so you'll see here that instead of using it in a calculated table, I've actually put my group by function inside of a variable, and I've called it products and product states. So that same um, table, I don't need it physically in this case, I want it virtually. Because then what I want to do is I want to um, fire each different customer down here. I want to work out, okay, what was the max product sales by state? So in which state, um, so for each different customer, what was their highest sale amount for a product in it, um, by, by each different state? Okay, and so I first of all do that aggregation, and then what I do is I put that um, that that virtual table now because this is a virtual table. I place it inside of Max X, and we run a um, we run some iterating. We we iterate through this virtual table, and then calculate up the sales uh, at every single row in that virtual table, and then only bring in the max. Okay, and so you can see how it's quite cool here how we're using we're using this virtual um, aggregated up table inside as a virtual table inside an iterating function max x. Then we need to test it, right? So basically, this gives me yeah, I'm comparing it versus my total revenue. Revenue, but check out um, check out what happens when I select say a, a person here. So you'll see here that the max product sales by state is this one here, and it's reflecting that number there. So whilst the total sales is 193, the max sales by state and product is 68,000. And we can keep checking like like so, and you'll see that it's returning um, returning the correct result each time. So hopefully that gives you a good overview. I think I'll round things off there. Um, all I would recommend from here is, is just have a play around. Um, have a play around with this one. Uh, just just use it once to, to to create some sort of aggregation and see what what comes up. Um, my personal preference is still probably to use summarize honestly because I just find it's just it's just easier um, and, it, and, it, and I don't really like it how you have to, have, have to reference this all the time like I prefer just to be able to reference measures inside of here um, so look it's totally personal preference but just a just an, another function to have a think about um, and and you know just, just to see if it, if it works better um, within your models and than what you're currently using Okay, if you got a lot out of this one and um, enjoyed learning about this particular function, definitely throw the video a like. Uh, and don't forget to uh, subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV. Lots of great content um, coming out to you, so looking forward to, to releasing that shortly. Okay, all the best.